Dwayne Rankin, Arizona Republic. Um, Y'all tripping. Coach, James, GM, how would you assess Coach Vogel's coaching this year? Um, I thought Frank did a great job uh, given the circumstances. Um, you know, we, we assembled a really talented team, uh, guys from, you know, primarily three scores. And whenever you're trying to get guys to adjust and adapt your games, uh, there's a transition time. Um, it, 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 it is sometimes a struggle, uh, but I thought he, he did a great job this year. Uh, if you look at our record, I think Matt talked about it, 49 wins compared to mid-40s last year. Um, you know, it, it was, it was a, a, a tough grind with the, the lack of continuity and health. Um, but we won 49 games, and we were in the playoffs against a, a really good Minnesota team that just was a better team than us. So I thought he did a tremendous job. I thought the staff did a great job. I thought the players did a really good job. Um, just not good enough to, to reach our goals. To your point about guys having to adjust, do you? there's a lot of talk, obviously, about the point guard position. been answering questions about it all season. Do you believe that this team needs a point guard, or do you believe that those three are capable of being the lead offensive initiators? Oh, I think the team could benefit from having a point guard. Um, I, I believe the team could benefit from having backup forwards, backup centers. Um, you know, I still always go back to your best players on the floor. Um, that's a narrative we'll hear a lot, a point guard, point guard, point guard, point guard, point guard, point guard. And I'm saying, sure, that's, that's great. Who, who do you want? Like, who do you want? Like, who's available? given the way we're built, who can fit with this group, whose game seamlessly fits with this group. And when you put that player on the floor and you take the ball out of someone's hands, whose hands are you taking it out of and who are you putting in that position? And so it's, it's, it's more than just a position, um, like a point guard or small forward. It's the actual player that you can get or you do have. And so if we had the point guard that would be the best fit for this group, we'd find them. Um, if available. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong. I don't run away from saying we could benefit from having a point guard. I just don't think that was the, the answer to a lot of our problems. James, Amanda Flugrad for Sun Sideline. A lot of the players had talked about communication, lack of communication being an issue this season, especially on defense. What did you notice there and maybe how do you improve that? Um, that our guys, they like to talk around video games. Um, it's really tough for them sometimes when you're coming into a new situation with, with new staff, new players, um, and, and really new systems, right? The, the, the language is different wherever you are. Uh, we all know low man help defensively. We can get into the specifics of that. Uh, we all know our, our pick and roll coverages, but they're different. They're things that are ingrained in you based on where you've been uh, that you have to unlearn and you have to relearn. And so I thought our, our communication got better. Um, but I just thought under stress, a lot of times you saw the lack of chemistry, the lack of cohesion, and the uncertainty. And, and that's just something that you have to accelerate for us as, uh, for us as a team, for our players. Uh, they just have to be better at that. Um, but it comes with time, and it comes with a, a conscious effort to, um, to, to, to rectify that. And, and so I, I think if you ask every single player, they would say communication, communication. But it all starts with them individually. And until they're on the same page, you'll get what we got. James, Brendan Mal, Burn City Sports. When you look at you guys obviously not reaching the ultimate goal, can you pinpoint a specific thing of why you guys weren't able to do that or what did you think the main reason was that you guys weren't able to reach that goal? Um, I'd say there, there's no one specific point, uh, but I, I do have to give credit to Minnesota, a really good team that played really good basketball at the right time. Uh, they were better than us. Um, they were more connected than us. And, uh, you know, we had some injury challenges, but I can't point to one thing particularly. I will say that we, we – over the course of the year, we, we started to form an identity. It just wasn't solidified enough for us to withstand um, the pressure and the situation that, that we, we faced in the first round against Minnesota. James, Kellen Olsen, Arizona Sports, good to see you. When you mentioned the chemistry and the continuity, uh, guys getting on the same page, what do you think are the contributing factors to that? Is it because this group is together for the first year? Is it the personalities in the locker room not meshing? What do you think led to that disconnect? I think all of those things. I think all of those human conditions you're talking about, right? Familiarity. Once you're familiar with someone, you can develop a, a deep level of trust where you can be honest and candid in the toughest moments. I think when you're familiar with someone, um, you can start to get on the same page and recognize the patterns, recognize the patterns and the behaviors that put you on the same page. And so I don't think there's just one, one factor. I do know over time uh, it, it's easier the more time you have. Um, but we look at this thing from uh, year to year. And, and, and our goal, my goal, 
my responsibility, you know, coach's responsibility, the player's responsibility, is to accelerate all of those things. Um, because that's the only way you get ahead of it when you're coming together for the first time like we were. Uh, Greg Esposito, PHNX Sports. James, you've been around a lot of talented teams, teams with top-heavy rosters like this one. Uh, can you kind of talk about those first years that you were around those guys and how it kind of paralleled to this first year with this group? Um, different NBA, um, but still same, I would still say same formula. Uh, the playoffs is about your, your three best players playing well, um, your three best players being an advantage for you. Um, and the team that can consistently do that usually wins. I think in, in, if you look at where we were, um, we had moments where two of our three guys were on the same page. We've had moments where one of them was on, the, on like playing really, really well. And, uh, and, and our other team members, you know, our, our other guys, our supporting cast, um, like I say, our alternative starters, I would call them, they lifted the team up. Um, we just didn't have enough of those moments where we were all on the same page, all clicking at the right time. Uh, but this, this is a league about talent. Um, you know, there are very few instances in the NBA where you find a team that had one elite player, maybe two elite players, and was able to consistently win. I'm not just saying for one season. I mean consistently because we want to win for multiple years. And so I, I look at our team and I just say if, if we can get our guys uh, across the board, our 1 through 15, all on the same page, all understanding the sacrifices they have to make. And I think the sacrifice really starts with our, 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 our main guys, the guys we talk a lot about, Devin, Kevin, and Brad. Um, but you look at the sacrifices that the rest of the team has made, when we all get on the same page, I think we'll have the, what, we, what we want, which is a core group of players that are capable of competing and winning championships, competing at a high level, and doing it for multiple years. Hey, James, Mark McLoon, 3TV CBS 5. Uh, there, there was some talk or the national narrative, narrative that's been out there about potentially some, some chemistry issues. So could, can you speak to those? Did you sense any of those with the team that, that ended up with the sweep in the first round? Um, I don't, the, the sweep in the first round, uh, chemistry issues. Yeah, you have chemistry issues when you lose. I mean, I think if you go and look at every NBA game, every team that loses a game has chemistry issues. That's the, that's the easy answer um, because it's a, tough, it's a tough sport. So if, when you're all in sync and the chemistry is great and you have the best talent, you typically dominate. We've seen that very few times in the history of the NBA where teams had that type of chemistry consistently with the talent and, do and they dominated. And so for us, chemistry is built over time. And I actually think chemistry is built through fire. So if you ask our guys today what their chemistry is like after going through the pain that we went through this, this past week, I guarantee you when they come into training camp next year, they're a tighter, more cohesive group. And they've been through the fire. And when you're through the fire, you trust. And when you trust, you're unbeatable. James, Robbie Baker with Fox 10. As you guys go into the offseason, how much do you value continuity in regards to maybe making some changes and shaking things up? Well, continuity is key. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I can guarantee you, I, I, I can ask every player, because make no mistake, continuity for us, the fans, the front office, that's great. Continuity really matters for the players. And so if you were to ask any of our players, hey, I know who I'm going to battle with next year. And I know all summer I can, I can reach out to that guy. I can work with that guy. I can continue to build with those guys. They'll all tell you they'll take that. And, and, and it's even more so when you're talking about having elite talent around you. So our chemistry will be great um, going through the summer, and it will serve us well as we continue to talk about how we translate this continuity and chemistry into a championship. James, when a team maybe underperforms or struggles a little bit, um, a lot of things happen. Do you feel like that the, that the players, that the locker room, that there was a buy-in with what Frank was asking them to do? And when things started to go astray a little bit, do you feel like they lost faith or trust in Frank? No, I, I, don't, I don't believe that's the, the case. I believe when, when things get tough and you're uncertain, you start to guess. And I thought that as we got near the end of the season, I thought you saw some indecision. Our guys thinking too much and not playing. And so... Um, as we continue to like, spend time together, we continue to, to build together, I think you'll see it's not about buy-in, it's about belief. Belief in one another, belief um, that the things that we're working on will translate in those moments. And like I said, we ran out of time. Uh, Baxter Holmes, the ESPN. James, how do you assess kind of uh, 
where you guys are at in terms of flexibility for roster building, the assets you have, that, you know, this is kind of a big talking point given some of the moves um, yeah, that were made to bring in some of these stars. I mean, we're starting from a place of having a, a very good core of players. And we have assets necessary to continue to use those assets to acquire players, right? And, and I said, going into this offseason, we have everything that we need to be able to add the players or the positions that will make us better. Um, I'm not thinking about 2031. Like Matt said it before, we're not thinking about the seventh grader in 2031. We're talking about elite players who want to win, saying, how can we win today? How can we win tomorrow? How can we win the next 12 months? Uh, Devin's not thinking about 2031. Kevin's not thinking about 2031. Brad, Grayson, Royce, um, you know, Eric Gordon, none of our guys are thinking about 2031. They're thinking about, we fell short of our goal this season. How do we run it back? How do we get better? How do we improve? How do we use all of our resources, all of our assets, all of our energy, our time? How do we invest those the right way so that we don't have this result again next summer? Yeah, Dana from Arizona Republic. Uh, just wondering about how you feel in today's NBA in which coaches are quickly fired despite team success in example of like Adrian Griffin when the Bucks were 30 and 13, or even Frank in this case, where you guys won 49 games and the speculation out there about his future with this team? Um, that's sports media in general. Um, everything's a story. Um, everyone's impatient. Um, everyone wants to make decisions and talk about things before they actually evaluate um, the decisions that are being made. Um, I just think for us, it's, it, it comes with the territory. Um, and we all know what we sign up for when you come here. And we know what happens when we set high expectations. When you set high expectations and you fall short, people question everything. And uh, for us, we will question everything. Um, but at the end of the day, we'll have the right answers. And those right answers will help us achieve that, those high expectations, which is to win a championship. And so we'll continue to, to deal with all the things that come with, with falling short. Uh, but I tell you, we're built for it. Hey, James, Barry Bloom. So just jumping off of Baxter's question a little bit, but more technical. I mean, in baseball, you, you don't have a salary cap. There are other restraints, but you can pretty much do whatever you want to do if you want to add players or subtract players. In the NBA, and I'm no capologist, I, I'm wondering under your structure right now where you have money spent, you're over the, the second cap, cap limit, the way I understand it. How much room do you have to grow and spend within the money that you have available and is already spent? Well, this isn't baseball. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, but where there's a will, there's a way. I believe that. Like, we, like Phoenix is a special place. We'll, we'll have all of the, we'll, we'll go through every uh, channel. We'll explore every uh, scenario to add and build our team. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's important to remember that we're starting with six, seven, eight really good core players. And when you're talking about building on the margins, I think we have more than enough to do that effect effectively. James, when you look at the way Kevin was utilized and uh, you know, much has been made of where he got his shots from, and he did get a few shots from the corner, but he got it from all over the lot. I guess my question is, do you feel like his talents were maximized in that sense of getting the shots that he's most comfortable with? I'll tell you, that's a constant uh, focus for us is to continue to figure out how to maximize Kevin Durant. Um, no one's done it yet. I believe we'll be the first team to do it uh, because if we can maximize him, we can maximize our entire roster, uh, we're a better team. But that's not an issue. I think Kevin had a phenomenal season this year offensively. I think there's a stretch. He had some of the best stretches of his career this year. So it wasn't an offensive thing. It wasn't just a, a util utilization or a usage thing. Um, it was just the totality of figuring out when and where and how to do it together. We just could not get on the same page. Uh, we ran out of time. But I think if you ask Kevin, he'll tell you. Kevin enjoys playing the game. We enjoy him playing the game. And when he's playing at the highest level, he makes us a really, really good team. And we're damn near unbeatable. Um, and you saw that at, at times this year. Um, but like every great player, um, you know what we may view as being Awesome, Kevin thinks isn't good enough uh, because he wants to be great. That's why he's a Hall of Famer. And, and so the moment he b becomes satisfied with the way he's playing, 
I think that'll be the moment he'll tell you that it's, it's probably time to, to think about something different.